Hey, this is Mr. Spencer. We're going to read Oh, Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. Look at this artwork. Very interesting. All right, so I have some slides. I'll go through these with you. Look at the eyes of Walt Whitman, this crazy old madman. All right, now, this is an adventurous, radical writer, and for many people, considered the godfather of American literature. After 1776, after Anne Bradstreet, Walt Whitman was one of the first writers to say, I'm an American, and I'm publishing American literature. That was pretty radical for the time. We weren't just this ragtag group of colonies, the younger brother of Great Britain, Americans starting to carve out their own identity. Do you remember Dead Poet Society? Oh, captain, my captain, standing on top of the desks, a poem read by Mr. Keating in the movie, and later the students call out their loyalty to their fallen comrade in the film's climax. Do you remember that? Who's this Walt Whitman guy? He was born 1819 in Long Island, New York State. He had eight siblings, the second of nine children. He has three brothers. They were all named after American leaders, George Thomas Andrew. You see that? Will we ever have a president, Walt, you think? Family, they found financial difficulty, so they moved around New York quite a bit, and he started using his language skills to communicate with all sorts of new people. He began work finishing formal schooling at age 11, so he started working very young as a professional, and he became an apprentice to a printer in a printing shop, writing filler material for the newspapers and magazines there. So if they had extra space, hey, let little Walt, that little tyke over there, fill in the space, writing little poems, comics, and filling in when needed. After some early work writing articles, editing, and publishing newspapers, he decided to move into poetry. And he wanted to produce an American epic that he came to call Leaves of Grass. Following the publication of his epic in 1855, he is declared America's first poet. Why American? Why the first poet? Well, he broke from the traditional style and form that most poetry readers were accustomed to, established by great writers like William Shakespeare or Chaucer in the British traditions. Despite the revolution and general ill feelings towards Great Britain, the most widely read literature at the time in America was still British titles and authors. So Whitman tried to break away from this, marking a huge break from tradition and the accepted forms of poetry. He used this idea called free verse, no formal rhyme scheme, no formal meter or musical pattern. And he kind of just wheeled and dealed, freestyled it. Obviously, this was different. Look at this example from another contemporary of his, Robert Browning. He wrote 1855, child rolling to the dark tower came. Well, some discuss if near the other graves be room enough for this and win the day. Suits best for carrying the corpse away with care about the banner, scarves, and staves. And still the man hears all and only craves. He may not shame such tender love and stay. This guy's falling into a very regular metrical step, a certain amount of syllables in each line. That's an old school British poet. Whitman came in like a house of fire. Look at the structure of this. This is from Leaves of Grass. I sing the body electric. This is the female form, Whitman wrote. This freestyle said a divine nimbus exhales from it, the female form, from head to foot. He describes how he's fiercely attracted the breath, the vapors, books, art, religion, time, all consumed. There's mad filaments, shoots, the plants, the blossoms. Do you understand what he's talking about here? The hair, the bosoms, the hips, the bend of legs. Please, you're, you're, you're stop it, Mr. Whitman. He's talking about ebbs and flows and bees and birds and stings and aching and jets of, okay, that's enough. But you can see this was a brand new style of poetry and it doesn't fall into a, a typical structure. You count the number of syllables in each line and it doesn't really matter because he's freestyling the amount of syllables, the shape, and the syntax in each line. Okay, This is American and he was consciously doing this to break away from British forms. Here's another example where he wrote Song of Myself. I celebrate myself and sing myself and what I assume you shall assume. Very passionate. He goes on to say, my tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I now, 37 years old in perfect health, begin, hoping to cease not till death. He leans and loafs at his ease, observing a spear of summer grass, finding all of creation. Every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Leaves of grass, we are all leaves of grass, blowing through the wind. 
you, me, we all share the same genetic structures. But the structure of this poem is quite freestyled. This is called free verse, okay? The father of free verse. No formal rhyme scheme, no formal meter or musical pattern, okay? So he used repeated images, symbols, phrases, grammatical units. He would sometimes list things out, enumerations and catalogs of descriptions, and he would contrast and use parallelism in different paired lines and couplets. Later in life, he published Leaves of Grass, which included a section, Drum Taps, which dealt with his Civil War nursing experiences from the soldiers that got injured in their wounds and him helping them and later in life for Whitman. And he, he wrote famous odes to Mr. President Abraham Lincoln, including, Oh, Captain, My Captain. He was buried at a mausoleum or an above-ground tomb shaped like a house he designed himself. He would often visit his final resting place during its construction. These are how many times he republished the Leaves of Grass book early in 1855 all the way up into the year of his death, 1892. What do all these revisions tell you about his writing process? Never satisfied, going on and on. Never having a final draft, re-editing, revising, adding new syntax, adding new ideas, almost like a constant sense of free-flowing. That's Whitman, which is a stark Contrast to the poem we're reading in the poem bank, Oh Captain, My Captain. Okay, the leaves of grass was how he made himself famous. He thought America was this new country full of fresh ideas, but it lacked its own literature and writing style, copying all the British guys. Whitman intended to write a distinctly American epic, and the death of Abraham Lincoln sort of afforded him this opportunity to carve out what an American is. Not a British king, not Queen Elizabeth. Abraham Lincoln, someone he modeled his career after the second part of his life. He used free verse and a rhythm and cadence that sometimes was based on the Bible, but more of a freestyling adaptation of biblical syntax. Remember, syntax is the way an author, poet, arranges the words. How would you describe the syntax of O Captain, My Captain? Is it more or less formal compared to other examples of Whitman's poems from leaves of grass. All right. How about we read the poem? Let's take a look here. Let's read it. I've got my poem bank with all my different files here, so we'll pull it out here. Bam. All right. Oh, captain, my captain. Oh, captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But oh, heart, 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 oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills. For you, bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you, the shores are crowding. For you, they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound. Its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object one. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells. But I, with mournful tread, walk the deck. My captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Is O Captain, My Captain more or less formal compared to other examples of Whitman's poems from Leaves of Grass? If writing an elegy, which is like you deliver the eulogy speech at a funeral, would this elegy type of poem, would the syntax you assume be more formal or informal? What would be more effective? If you're at a funeral, not a wake, not a celebration, a funeral, 
you're probably going to want more formal syntax. Do you, so you see how he adopts the syntax in the form of his poem to a particular subject and to a particular audience. Compare that to the Emperor of Ice Cream, which is more of an informal wake, the informal celebration after a funeral. All right, our universal subject of death. We all have it in common here, and we're taking a look at it with the poems. So what poetic devices should you know? Whitman explicitly uses these poetic devices in O oh, Captain, My Captain, an extended metaphor about our nation, the United States, functioning metaphorically as a boat. Apostrophe, where you call out or address something that's not there with you. O oh, Captain, My Captain. O oh, Bells, calling out to things that aren't really there. Synecdoche, it's when you take the part of something to represent the whole. And check your poetic devices glossary on the first page for anaphora. Okay, these are all in our glossary. Anaphora is a repetition at the beginning of successive lines. Oh, captain, my captain. All poets are using tone and mood and diction, syntax and theme, so we're seeing those repeated. But here's some specific ones, okay? Let's see if we can go further into what you might do for your perusal annotations. All right, so you give a eulogy, like here's President Biden for his son that passed away, giving a eulogy. Okay, a similar word spelled similarly is an elegy. It's a type of poem, okay? It's in your Poetic Devices glossary when you look at those types of poem. It's a poem that mourns or remembers the dead. Okay, compare the words, the spelling very similar to a eulogy. The sailor in the poem is imploring the dead captain to rise from the dead. Phoenix from the ashes. He's addressing someone that's not even there known as apostrophe. Oh, muse, sing in me, muse. Homer invokes at the beginning of the Odyssey, if you remember ninth grade. And this is even seen in the title and the refrain that repeats throughout the poem. Oh, captain, my captain, addressing something that's not really there. Not present in the room, because he's dead. The poet uses synecdoche in the last two lines where the deck of the boat represents the entire American audience at large, who is to hear the sad news that the president was murdered. Okay, page five of the glossary, you can see more for synecdoche. And Whitman uses anaphora by beginning many lines with the, for, or my, okay, repeating a phrase or a word at the beginning of successive lines. That's on the first page of the glossary. Okay, write those down in your notebook as you read through each poem. Are you attempting to look for tone or theme? What are you going to write on perusal? Okay, these are things that we can look for. So as you go through, note, this is a poem about Abraham Lincoln. I didn't want to give it away too clearly, but I kind of vaguely put this faded picture there. Did you recognize it? And then we'll see what you and your classmates can do on perusal. Oh, Captain, my captain. I sign in here using my Google BCSC account. And we'll see which ones we've got. So I was just looking at the ones from this last week. 30 hospitals in two hours, inheritance. And here's Oh, Captain, my captain. Curious to see what you'll come up with here. The colors. Symbolism. What about the syntax? That's definitely one I want you to focus on for this kind of poem. The syntax of this poem is mirroring or reflecting the subject. Can anybody elaborate on that? All right. This has been Mr. Spencer signing off.